So it's Mari McInerney from Crokey here and I'm talking with Ruth D'Souza and we are at um, in North at the North Richmond Community Health Centre. I'm going to give us a little peek at that and just see where we are. So that's the Community Health Centre and that's the Richmond Housing Estate. Um, and Ruth, you're going to introduce yourself and what your work involves here. Hi Mari, I'm Dr Ruth D'Souza. I'm the stream leader for um, research here. So my job is to develop evidence, research evidence that supports the products and services that we have here. And that's the school bell from next door that we can hear. <laughs> but um, CEH has been around for 21 years and it developed in response to the increasing demand um, for services that were culturally appropriate, sensitive, competent and safe for people from um, culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds. And um, a year and a half ago I started in this role with the goal of trying to build research into the things that we already do at CEH and to also find some new areas that we can do some work in. Hence the, the interest in wearable health technologies. Which is the symposium that you're hosting That's next right. Thursday. That's now, right. Now, can you lead from your work, how your work here um, in cultural competence and equity, how that leads to, to this symposium? Yeah, on so... really Fitbit smartphones and all sorts of yeah, things. Yeah, it's it's, it sounds like a bit of a leap, mm -hmm. but, but one of the things that CEH um, has, had, has a lot of expertise in is around consumer participation, cultural competence and health literacy. Now, um, one of the things that I'm really interested in is what are the things that we can use that can enhance um, health equity for people and one of the things that's very very interesting is that nowadays everyone has a phone. I've got my handbag here, my phone goes everywhere with me and in fact phones are you know they're computers that are very accessible they can do all kinds of things for us. Um, you can even call a phone a wearable because so often we're carrying it with us. But wearables are also things like Fitbits and Garmin's and so on and so forth. And what they do is they're a device that can provide information about our health. So lots of people have Fitbits that count the number of steps that you've taken. Um, I've got a health app on my phone that tells me how many steps I've done, how many kilometres and so on. And this information, I think, has the potential to, to revolutionise healthcare for people from our communities who might um, have different understandings of health and well-being, um, who might have dif different constraints um, which might be financial or all kinds of... In what way do you yeah. think it could revolutionise? Well I, th I think there is a gap um, and I'm a, someone who has a clinical background as well, I'm a, a nurse by background and one of the things that I'm aware of is that when you go and see a health professional, there's quite often information overload. And so we've become very, very interested in the idea of health literacy, which is how do we make information accessible to anybody so that they can use that information in order to make the best decisions for themselves. One of the things about the way in which we speak is we can get lost in our own jargon. We can get lost in our own routines and our own schedules. And the thing about a device like a phone is that it can provide a way of translating information from the health from the person to the health professional. So for example, we have a nutritionist here. I, lo I love being here because it's all happening. Um, we have a nutritionist here and when I said to her, do you know that on your phone there is something that counts the number of steps you've taken, she said, I had no idea. I'm going to tell all my clients and, and what that means is they don't have to keep a diary or a log and it's very hard to remember how many steps did I take, where did I walk, but this device does it all for you and she was saying well how wonderful to have a device that counts these things that you could just show to somebody that you're not having to put a lot of work into monitoring and recording and from that you're providing information that can assist the health professional to help you so I think that's the potential that I see in, in wearable devices is that they can relieve some of the burden of health maintenance and monitoring and tracking that we're increasingly expecting people to do. You know, like count your steps, um, you know, check how much sugar you're eating or, you know, all those kind of health messages.
So uh, more than just relying on um, the technologists to make that all happen for us, what, what will the symposium therefore be looking at? What are the issues that that possibility ri uh, arises for us? Well, I, I think the thing that's really interesting uh, uh, about these technologies is they're new and they're emerging, you know, um, and apps are being developed, you know, like hundreds by the minute. I'm probably exaggerating, but we don't always know how rigorous is that app? Does it really do what it's claiming to do? How accurate is it? How evidence-based is it? So what we're wanting to do is have a conversation both about the general kind of aspects of wearable health technologies, which will apply to everybody, but also the very specific things that apply to culturally and linguistically diverse communities. So they're gonna be things like, um, you know, who does the data belong to? You know, on my health app, all the stuff about the steps and the number of flights I've climbed, who does that belong to? It doesn't actually belong to me. Um, so what are the issues around ownership of data, around privacy, around how does that data potentially get aggregated or put together to show patterns? And how are those patterns then being recognised by people who are in a position to do good and not so good things about it. So for example, in some ways, the um, ways in which these kinds of devices can tell us whether there's an epidemic of measles. You know, they, they can they can show us where the hotspots are or where, where have all the pregnancies been happening. There's a lot of potential for the information that we collect to inform public health intelligence, but could that information also be used to create more controlling mechanisms? You know, does it mean, and I'm exaggerating here, that if there are a large number of pregnancies in a particular area, they might suggest a curfew or other kinds of, um, you know, mechanisms to monitor to, um, the changes that are happening in the social environment. So, so I think they bring lots of opportunities, but they also bring lots of challenges. And I think the opportunity to have an interdisciplinary conversation about these things is something that doesn't happen very often. So we're going to have developers, policy makers, clinicians, academics, researchers, um, all kinds of people coming together to talk about these issues. And three keynote speakers. Three keynote speakers, so who, who, yes. Can you give us a brief rundown on that? So we have um, fabulous Sunil Jathani, who's who's about to submit his PhD on wearable health technologies. And he's going to talk to us about the research, how these technologies have developed. And, and one of the things that I find very interesting is that the mechanism that goes into monitoring bracelets, you know, for people who are um, on probation or, or serving the sentence in community that same mechanism that does that or that's in livestock control is also being used in Fitbits you know to actually monitor people mm -hmm. but in a way that is not coercive or it's a different kind of coercion you know the desire for health is a form of coercion in this case um, so Sunil is going to be presenting the kind of big picture research ideas um, our next speaker Jeanette Googler is going to be talking about well, how do you implement health technologies in health systems and, and um, hospitals? And then Sean McLowry, who's from Deloitte, is going to be talking about the business technical aspects of these technologies. So we've got three really fascinating kinds of perspectives. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have youth respond to those um, perspectives. And they're going to have five minutes each to just sort of talk about, well, what does it mean to be a young person? Um, and we've got two master's students and, and a doctor who are going to talk about, well, what do these things mean for us from where we stand? Because these are all older people talking. What does it mean to be generation whatever it is and be confronted with this very technologized world? You know, what kind of opportunities for enhancing health do these platforms and, and technologies offer? And, and, then, and then we're going to, sorry, Mary, we're then going to split into groups and, and start going more deeply into particular themes, whether it's data ethics or data analytics or workforce issues, you know. How, how do we prepare the nurse, the doctor, the physio, the OT, the podiatrist, the nutritionist of the future? You know, what skills will they need to have? You know, they'll need that technological literacy, you know. If they're advancing um, mobile health or wearable health technologies um, as a tool that their clients or patients can use, they'll need to have a level of understanding about what value those 
you know, technologies have. And all of these discussions will have a, a firm cultural and equity lens. They um, will, they yeah. will. I mean, we, we want to have the, the general conversation because that's also very useful. And I think by, by having the focus on a group who are um, living in more marginalising conditions, uh, I'm not saying they're marginalised just by virtue of being that group, but th there are experiences that they have that people who are white worried and well who the usual marketers are targeting you know for these goods and products um, to, to focus on um, groups who are not traditionally the ones being marketed to um, opens up some really interesting questions and conversations I think Thank you very much. I'm really looking forward to it. We'll be Thank live you. tweeting. Thanks, uh, Mary. And you will be publishing out of it. We certainly will. And uh, watch the space. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mary.